When Mario Kart Tour launched in September in 2019, the game has had a bit of a false start. And by false start, I mean there were a lot of problems with the game. There was no multiplayer, you only played the game in portrait mode, Mario was an unlockable driver despite the game being called Mario Kart, and friends had no purpose besides helping you receive coins from ranked, and helping you complete the first two sets of the first wave of the standard challenges. However, over time, the game has gotten a lot better, and there were a lot of improvements to the game. The Exploration Tour introduced giving you the option to play the game in either Portrait Mode or Landscape Mode, Multiplayer became an option in March of 2020, and tons of other great things that Nintendo has done to the game. However, the game could still use more improvements to the game. Which brings to this question. What are some much needed changes that the game needs in order to become more successful than it already is? Welcome back to the Observatory everybody, and in this video, I will be discussing 10 changes that still need to happen in Mario Kart Tour. This list, as well as the other lists, is in no particular order, and covers the changes that still need to happen in Mario Kart Tour, and I will also be discussing how I would change the game based on the point that I'm at. If there is one thing that needs to be changed, is you guys stop neglecting to hit that subscribe button and leaving the bell off. If you neglect to do those things, then you won't be notified when I will upload next. And not just that, only this many of you guys are subscribed. That needs to be changed. Because I am trying to hit 1,000 subscribers before the end of the year. So it will mean a lot to me if you hit that subscribe button and turn on that bell. So without further ado, here are 10 changes that still need to happen in Mario Kart Tour. Items play a major role in Mario Kart Tour. Each item acts differently, based on that item's behavior. Some can help you score a lot of points, and others, not so much by how you use them. As of the Sunday Tour, we have a variety of items with different characters having the item. From one of the worst items in the game, to one of the best items in the game. And the best item in the game, has a ton of characters with the item. And that item is the first thing on this list that needs to be changed. The coin box. The effects of the coin box doesn't need to be changed as it is already broken enough. Which is the main reason why I finally achieved my goal of hitting over 100,000 points in the Ocean Tour. Week 2's rank cup because of the two coin box plus frenzies from Rosalina Swimwear on single burst Speedway 2T. And on top of that, once an item arrives in the game, the effects cannot be changed. But beyond that, it is how many characters have in the item. As of the Sunday Tour, there are a total of 16 characters with coin box. And that includes the gold and question block me suits, as well as some characters that don't deserve to have the coin box. That many characters with coin box can make the game pretty unbalanced, especially when a team rally goes on, where the coin box is super helpful when collecting tokens, as a lot of them are spewed from the box. That is what happened during Bowser vs DK when Team Bowser hoarded almost every single driver of the coin box with the exception of Mario Hakama, Pauline Party Time, and Rosalina Swimwear. Plus, Team Bowser was more popular in that team rally so uh, yeah, it kinda makes sense I guess. And when it comes to collecting coins from the coin box, there is a term used by many Mario Kart tourists and it is called boomboxing. Boomboxing is when someone uses a coin box and another person activates a boomerang to collect all if not most of the coins that were spewed from the box. This process is so broken that many competitive players use this method to get themselves into the top 1000, aka the all cup ranking. Boomboxing was the main reason why I ended up hitting over 1 million points in the Amsterdam tour thanks to Rosalina Volendam activating a boomerang frenzy on Yoshi Gold Egg's coin box. So like I said, the coin box, one of the most broken items ever, and I just wish that there were less characters with this item.
This next point covers a feature that debuted in the Wild West tour that has now contradicted my 10 mistakes video. And that involves the token shop. I stated in the video that not clearing out the token shop can be a mistake because you are missing out on the helpful rewards, especially the tickets. As you can use the tickets to boost the driver car gliders points slash level, especially for those that are selected as a top show for rank tracks. However, in the Samurai Tour, Nintendo added pipes to the token shop, and the amount of pipes it takes you to complete the entire token shop pipes is a lot, which leads to the second change, pipes in the token shop. There are a total of 31 pipes. 31! There are so many pipes in the token shop that clearing out the token shop pipe is pretty much impossible now. Unless like I said with the first change about the team rallies and how token collecting grinding is a must in order to win the team rally. After the pipes were added into the token shop, I have gotten so many comments from that video saying how not clearing out the token shop is now impossible and how you collect tokens differs each tour. Most tours you collect tokens from on the courses, but there are other ways that you collect tokens. The other ways including activating mini turbos, which so far only happened in the penguin tour as of the making of this video, and causing opponents to crash. But the most efficient way to collect tokens is by collecting them on the courses, as you can collect more tokens that way than causing opponents to crash. But it is not just the pipes themselves that need to be changed. It is how many tokens it takes you to clear out the token shop pipes. You start out with 50 tokens, and the prices rises up by 10 until you hit 200. After that, the price rises up by 50 until you hit 500, and the token price stays at 500 for the remaining 10 pipes. Nobody, not even me, has the time to do that much token grinding to fire off all 31 pipes. How would I change the token shop pipes? Lower the amount of pipes to either 20 or 25, or leave the price the same as it when the token shop pipes reset each tour. In this case, 50 tokens. If the prices need to rise up, then just keep rising up by 10, and not by 50 after reaching the 200 token mark. That will make clearing out the token shop easier and thus not contradicting my mistakes video. There is a term used by many people when they pay for real money in a mobile game for extra rewards, and that term is called gacha mechanics. Mario Kart Tour is an example of having gacha mechanics. You can pay for stuff like packs, rubies, and even the Gold Pass subscription. However, the prices tend to be a bit too high, which brings to the third needed change, the gacha mechanic prices. Let's start off with the first gacha mechanic, the rubies. In the US, you can purchase 3 to 135 rubies in the ruby shop. However, the price for 3 rubies can be a bit of a ripoff, as you can get 3 rubies for $1.99 to 135 rubies for $69.99 plus tax. That is honestly a high price for that many rubies. If it were up to me, I would rather buy a $19.99 or $39.99 plus tax pack for 45 to 90 rubies than paying $1.99 for 3 rubies. If the prices were lowered for 3 rubies for 99 cents and 135 rubies for $49.99, or keep the prices the same but raise the number of rubies like 5 rubies for $1.99, just like with another gacha mechanic, the value pack and 145 rubies for $69.99, it will make purchasing rubies a little bit more reasonable. And speaking of the packs, the packs themselves are also pretty high. Like I said, packs in the US can go from $19.99 to $39.99. As a broke college student myself who works part time as a dairy associate for Kroger, I don't have that much money. If packs were lower $5 for both of the packs, then it will make people living in the US more likely to buy for these packs than paying 20 to 40 dollars only to receive 45 to 90 rubies. The next gacha mechanic is the premium challenges. $4.99 for a regular premium challenge pack 
isn't that bad of a price. But with the Premium Challenges Plus Pack, that is a whole different story. The price for the Premium Challenges Plus is $14.99 plus tax. And that's a little bit expensive, but not that bad of a price. But you do receive a bunch of high-end tickets in the Premium Challenges Plus Pack, and with the high-end tickets ranging over 10,000 coins in the tier shop, I can give it that. However, there are gadget mechanics that are at a reasonable price, like the Gold Pass, Premium Challenges, and the already stated value packs that includes rubies and tickets. So like I stated, some of us are college students, and we don't have money to pay for the gadget mechanics. But with the rewards that are included in the gadget mechanics, we really need them. This next most needed change needs a lot of explanation as there is a lot to go with this next point. This one is one of the points that needs to be fixed really, really, really bad. And that involves something that I have been complaining about ever since they have been introduced. The Me Outfits. Me Outfits have been a hit since the Me Tour which was launched around the same time as the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass. You can obtain outfits based off of original characters, like Rosalina and Wario, and me outfits that are abstract to the game, like Pastry Chef and Ice Cream. And new waves of me outfits arrive every tour. However, how you obtain me outfits is horrendous. There are five ways to obtain me outfits. These ways include the tier challenges, me shop, tour gifts, token shop, and ranked. Three of these ways are really bad. Let's start off with the me outfits in ranked. I have discussed this in my 10 unfair things video, but I want to discuss it again as it is a thing that needs to be changed. The reason why ranked me outfits are unfair is because they are handled so poorly. There are two requirements that you have to complete in order to obtain ranked me outfits. The first requirement is that you have to be at least tier 50, a point that I forgot to mention in my unfair video. And if you do hit tier 50 and a me outfit is available in ranked, you have no choice but to get first in ranked. As of the Mario vs. Luigi 2022 tour, we have had six me outfits only available in ranked. These outfits include Rosalina for me, and Metropolitan, King Boo for Samurai, Bird over Yoshi 2022, Question Mark Block for Peach vs. Bowser, and Sunday, PD Piranha for Piranha Plant, and Dry Bowser for Bowser. Of all the me outfits that were available in ranked as of the making of this script, I have gotten two of these me outfits, and that was the PD Piranha me outfit and the Dry Bowser me outfit, both from week one's ranked. How would I change the ranked me outfits? Just like what I stated in my unfair video, reward me outfits that are only available in rank to anyone fifth place and above, regardless of their tier. Just like with the other rank rewards, like Light Blue Shy Guy and Purple Koopa Free Runny. The next way to obtain me outfits is the me shop. The me shop is a lot different than the gacha mechanics, as you don't pay real money for the me suits, but instead, you pay for me suits using rubies. However, the prices for the me suits are just like the gacha mechanics. They are outrageous. When a me outfit arrives in the me shop for the first time, it will cost you 70 rubies, but when the next tour happens, or you have paid 70 rubies for the first time, it will cost you 100 rubies for the me suits. Both of these prices, including the sale price, is honestly a pretty high number for me outfits. No one has that many rubies to purchase for me outfits, because they rather save rubies to do pipe pulling for driver's carts and gliders they need for ranked. If the price for the me outfits are lower for 35 rubies in the sale price, and 50 rubies as the main price, then purchasing me outfits will be more reasonable. But for now, the selected me outfits are just sitting ducks in the me shop with a very expensive price. The third way is the tier challenges. Once you complete the tier challenges, 
you can receive the bronze, silver, and gold me outfits. The bronze and silver me outfits are bad, as one of the requirements have you get first and ranked. And the odds of you getting first and ranked depends on your competition. You can have easy competition or hard competition. But the gold me outfit is the main outfit that needs to be changed. The only requirement to obtain the gold me outfit is to hit tier 80. But for some Markar Taurus, that is not easy to hit. Unless if you're a competitive player, then it might be easy. If the requirements for the gold me outfit are the same as the bronze and silver me outfit, only slightly more challenging than silver me outfit, then Markar Taurus will easily complete the gold me outfit card, thus not having to wait for them to hit tier 80 to obtain the outfit. The fourth way is honestly really rare this would happen, so I wouldn't change it because me outfits have only appeared in this feature twice as of writing out this script. The last time this happened was in the Ocean Tour, and that involves the token shop, as you have to pay 200 tokens for the me outfits. And the final way, the tour gifts only happened once, and that was during the me tour, the me's introduction tour, so that definitely doesn't need to be changed. I have mentioned this in my Enjoy Things video that I forgot to include this point in my Pointless Things video, but I am mentioning it in this list as it could use a major change to it, and that involves the Expert Challenges. The Expert Challenges debuted in the Cooking Tour, and each set of the Expert Challenges have a lifespan of 82 days, which is around 5 tours. Each set of the Expert Challenges have you do Extreme Challenges, and if you complete a requirement before the time limit expires, the reward you get is a badge. Just a badge. No other rewards, just a badge. And when you complete the card, the reward you get is a badge unlike any other, like Mario, Luigi, and Rosalina and Luma. However, the only other reward if you complete a row of the challenges are 500 coins, and that's it. The Expert Challenges was a fun idea to launch, but after a while, the Expert Challenges can be pretty boring to complete very fast. I asked many of my friends from multiple Discord servers if they think the Expert Challenges is pretty boring because of the lack of extra rewards when completing the challenge. They said, yes, it gets very boring. The only times where people do complete the Expert Challenges is for the badge that they like or prefer, or for the extra coins that they need for the daily selects and or the tier shop. But any other time you complete the expert challenges, you'll be saying to yourself, I won, but at what cost? The times I felt like completing the expert challenges was for not only the extra coins, but one of the sets featured the Rosalina and Luma badge. And as a Rosalina obsessed myself, I wanted that badge. In fact, I completed that set way before the time limit expired. If there were rewards like rubies, high-end tickets of any kind, or even a free pie pool like those in the token shop and today's challenges, after you complete a requirement of the expert challenges, then they will be more enjoyable to complete. But since there aren't any rewards than just a plain red badge, it makes the expert challenges pretty pointless and could use a giant makeover. Friends have come a long way. There are friends out there that have been playing Marker Tour for a long time, such as myself, and have been playing the game for hours at a time, such as myself. So that might mean that you can't have too many friends in your friends list, right? <sighs> About that. There is a friends limit, and the limit to how many friends you have is way too short, which brings to the next most needed change, more friends in the friends list. You have friends out there either competing in rank cups, actively playing in multiplayer, or sending you greeting coins every day, like some of my friends. I mean, I sure I got friends out there who aren't active in Markar Tour in a while, but I hate to get rid of them because either I know them from Discord or real life. Many of us wanted the friends list to be more than 50. What is the change? We want about 100 friends in the friends list. Just think of what will happen if you have 100 friends. All the greeting coins you will receive, 
the amount of fun you will have with your friends in multiplayer races, whether it's just for fun or two-player challenges, and you won't have to delete a lot of friends from your friends list because they haven't been active playing the game in a while, such as my friends. For this next point, I have no idea why Nintendo would do something like this. It is just unnecessary that they would change the way that this feature to what it is right now. And that involves the next needed change, the daily selects. It is not how many coins you spend on stuff in the daily selects and all that, but it is what you receive in the daily selects. You can receive items like driver's carts and gliders that you can either level up or are brand new to you, point boost tickets, even level up tickets. However, this is Mario Kart Tour in the now. Back in the game's earlier days, we have had way better items than we have right now. Those new to the game, you didn't know this, but there were a couple of times that quick tickets were available in the daily selects. However, for some unknown and dumb reason, Nintendo removed the ability to receive quick tickets in the daily selects. Now the only way to get quick tickets are from the second week of the tour, only if you complete the second week challenge card. However, you only get one quick ticket per second week challenge card. If you don't complete the second week challenge card before the tour ends, you don't receive the quick ticket thus making unlocking all the cups fast and possible. But it is not just the cups that you can use a quick ticket on. Back in the Bangkok tour, Nintendo did a maintenance update that allows us to change up the selections on the daily selects. However, there is a problem with this update. Quick tickets are not available in the daily selects after the update, which makes using quick tickets to change up the daily selects pretty pointless. Like, who would fall for this trickery. I'm not that dumb to use a quick ticket on the daily selects when I only use them to unlock a cup when a new tour opens up. Quick tickets aren't the only thing that got nerfed. The high-end tickets also took a bad hit, but they were not removed. In the Los Angeles 2022 tour, Nintendo did an update that nerfed the probability of receiving a high-end ticket in the daily selects, so that way, competitive players who have maxed out their driver's carts and gliders prior to the update, are unable to receive these tickets. However, you can receive high-end tickets in the tier shop, but the tickets in the tier shop can be a bit more expensive than those in the daily selects. If Nintendo didn't mess with daily selects by removing the quick tickets and nerfing the probability of high-end tickets, then it makes buying stuff in the daily selects more reasonable. I wish there was a setting in the race settings for this next most needed change. This is another one of those frustrating things that Mario Kart tourists can experience alongside the Mi outfits. This was discussed in my hate video, this was discussed in my unfair video, and now it's time for this difficulty to be changed. The bot difficulty. The bots are incredibly difficult. There is no option in the settings before any race starts to decrease the difficulty of the bots. However, there is one way to lower the difficulty of the bots. Let me play you the clip from my hate video about me ranting about the difficulty of the bots. Let's face it, number six, bots. The bots in Mario Kart Tour are so dang difficult, it is like Nintendo made the game on expert mode with no way to lower the CPU difficulty. However, there is one YouTuber that saved the day, and his name is Spartakurt. Spartakurt uploaded a short titled, How to Make Bots Easier in Mario Kart Tour. He stated that the only way to make the bots easier is to race them without quitting or restarting your race, because the number of bots with badges that you race determine the level of difficulty that the bots will experience. The more badges mean harder bots, and less badges mean easier bots. Spartakurt stated it will take 10 to 20 races to lower the number of bots with badges you will race with, which it wasn't the case, considering the bots are already aggressive to deal with. This process 
is super tedious and time consuming. However, what Spartacurt forgot to mention that lowering the bot technique only works one track at a time. If you race on a different track after lowering the badges or close the app for a certain period of time, there will be more bots with badges, even if it's just one extra badge, thus making the race a little bit more difficult. Mario Kart Tours, including me, sent in requests to Nintendo to ease the difficulty of the bots because in the Amsterdam Tour, the bots got buffed. So like I stated, if there was an option in the race settings that allows us to change the difficulty of the bots, whether we want to race them on hard mode or not, then we won't have to worry about the difficulty. But since there isn't, it makes the game more aggravating than it already is and it sucks. This next change is another change to take in, and the change I'm about to make comes with a big twist. Just like with the me outfits and the bots, this next thing is one of the most frustrating things ever. I have been victim to this, you have been victim to this, just like with the bot difficulty, this was discussed in my hate video, my unfair video, but I am discussing it again. The change, the spotlight pipe probability. There are two reasons why this needs to be changed. The first reason are spotlight stars. Spotlight stars indicate that you have received the week's pipes spotlight driver. Not so much for the carts and gliders as there's no spotlight stars for the spotlight carts and gliders. In fact, you can receive spotlight carts and gliders from fake green pipes, which happened to me twice in the Metropolitan Tour, one for the Fast Frank and one for the Candlelight Flight Cake. However, there is a catch with spotlight stars. Just because you see a spotlight star does not typically mean that you have received the spotlight driver. In some cases, you can see a spotlight star and the result end up being a regular high-end, which can be a bit of a troll. I have been victim to this troll five times as of the Ocean Tour. In the Kamek Tour, I was fooled into thinking I got Kamek. The result ended up being Dry Bowser. I didn't get Kamek that tour, but I did get Kamek three times in the Peach vs. Bowser Tour. In the New Year's 2022 Tour, I was fooled into thinking I got Meowzelina. The result ended up being King Bomb. I got Meowzelina after 20 pulls, so I'm not mad about it. In the Metropolitan Tour, I was fooled into thinking I got either Chef Rosalina or Luigi Lederhosen because they were spotlight drivers in the same pipe. But I preferably wanted Chef Rosalina, as that who's what I wanted originally in the first place. I ended up getting Cat Toad. I got Chef Rosalina after 84 pulls. 84! I got Mario Baseball in the second anniversary tour week 2 first try via free pipe, and I don't even like baseball! In the Bangkok Tour, the tour after Metropolitan, I got fooled into thinking I got Daisy Tie Dress. The result ended up being Cat Toad again. I ended up getting Daisy Tie Dress after 76 pulls. My luck for spotlights was so bad those two tours that I decided not to pull for PD Piranha in the Piranha Plant Tour so that way I can say rubies. And boy, I made the right decision to do that. Because in the Ocean Tour, the tour after Piranha Plant, I got fooled into thinking I got Daisy Sailor. The result ended up being White Yoshi. I got Daisy Sailor after 81 pulls. These tours turned the amount of rubies I had in the ruby bank into a giant gaping hole. What did he say? I don't know what kind of luck I got with spotlights after Metropolitan, but I can tell you it hasn't been great. And the amount of pulls it takes you to receive spotlights lead into the next reason why the spotlight pipe probability needs to be fixed. You can have either bad luck where you either almost run on empty trying to get the spotlight you wanted, or not receiving the spotlight at all. Those two parts happened to me in the tours that I mentioned, plus the tours where I failed to obtain a war and swim with Rosalina in their debut tours, Vancouver and Marine, plus Daisy Swimwear in the summer tour. Or, you can have good luck with spotlights, as you can receive spotlights early, such as me in the Mario Tour Week 1, Second Anniversary Tour Week 2, and the Toad vs. Toadette Tour Week 2, Mario Racer, Mario Baseball, and Toad Builder, first try from Free Pipes, as well as Daisy Yukata and Mario vs. Peach Tour Week 2 second try from Free Pipe. 
How would I change the spotlight pie probability? This is where the twist comes in. I don't need to, as there is going to be an update in October that removes the spotlight pipes and are being transformed into a spotlight shop so that way you can pay rubies for new spotlight drivers, carts, and gliders and spotlights from past tours are being featured in the shop as well. Something that I'm fine with, so that way I don't get trolled into thinking I've gotten a spotlight I'm trying to pull for and it turns out to be a regular high-end. I know a lot of people are not satisfied with the change, but it's their opinion, not mine. As a Gold Pass subscriber myself, I kind of feel bad for those that are not a Gold Pass subscriber. They have far less treatment, especially for a certain type of currency that everybody can receive, Gold Pass sub or not, and that involves free rubies. Rubies help you obtain spotlights from an upcoming transformed spotlight shop, spending for me outfits and coin rush, but if you have seen my 10 mistakes video, I highly suggest you do not use your rubies for me outfits and coin rush as you can possibly decrease your chances of receiving a spotlight driver card and glider that you need for ranked. You can receive free rubies from tour gifts, cart pro, celebrations, standard multiplayer and tier challenges, token shop from using tokens and or from the pipes from the token shop, rank cups, and the today's challenges either from days 5 and 10 and from the pipes. Which brings this question however, how many free rubies do non gold pass subscribers obtain each tour? Excluding cart pro and celebrations as they don't show up every tour, token shop pipes and today's challenge pipes as there is a chance that you won't receive any rubies, Standard multiplayer and tier challenges as there's no way you can complete them all in one tour. And rank cups as the amount you get varies your placement. You will receive a maximum of 69 rubies. 21 from tour gifts, 10 from the today's challenges, days 5 and 10, 15 for the token shop, 5 for the tour multiplayer challenges, and 18 for the tour points challenges. And yes, I had to do multiple double checkings to make sure I got my math right. If non goal pass subs received at least 80 rubies each tour, then all it makes saving rubies a little bit easier, thus more likely for non goal pass subs to obtain spotlights from the spotlight shop that they need for ranked or for the driver card and glider that are in their interest, such as me with Rosalina alts, even though I am a goal pass sub. So there we have it. Those are 10 changes that need to happen in Mario Kart Tour. Before I end the video, I want to thank you all for helping me hit over 700 subscribers going on to 800. It really means a lot to me. I still have ideas in mind, so keep an eye out for those. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, see ya!